Hi guys, I'm sorry for being gone for so long. I've had a lot of personal shizzle going on that I've had to sort out. Hopefully it's supposed to get back on track, but I thought I'd start by saying sorry for that first. Getting on to the video though, today I'm just going to be running through the Krebs cycle, but this is going to be a much higher level as in there's not really much further depth you can go without learning all the enzymes and everything they do and blah 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 because like yeah as you probably already know if you're looking at this video the Krebs cycle is a key step in respiration to produce NADH and FADH2 which are proton carriers needed in the electron transport chain just to provide protons and electrons. There are eight steps in total and for each step not only will I say the product but I'll also say what enzyme is used and the side products and where they come from being the NADH, CO2, ATP and FADH2. I'm also currently doing this for uni so it's pretty handy to be able to do this kind of video because I've managed to learn it all last minute in the desperation of not looking like I don't have a clue what I'm on about. Getting on with it though, let's actually go to the screen and let's find out how Krebs cycle works. Okay, so the first step in the Krebs cycle is the combining of acetyl coenzyme A to a molecule called oxaloacetate. Now, I hope you don't mind, but I'm going to go through the end with the enzymes for people who don't really care about remembering the enzymes and just want to know the steps. So if you do want to know it all, just stick around. If not, then you can close the video. So the acetyl coenzyme A joins with oxaloacetate to form a molecule of citrate. This citrate will then be converted to another molecule, which is lovely and easy to remember, called isocitrate. So there's the first couple of steps out of the way already. Oxaloacetate, acetyl coenzyme A makes citrate, and then citrate's converted to isocitrate. This isocitrate will then be converted into alpha ketoglutarate. I really hope I spell that right, but I'm a bit dyslexic. So this is also a step where we get our first side products formed, being NADH and CO2. So this is between steps two to three. Our next step, the alpha ketoglutarate, is converted to, oh, misspelled it already, succinyl coenzyme. A. And then again, we get another NADH and CO2 form. So we know that between from step 2 to 3, there's NADH plus CO2, and then straight away again, there's NADH plus CO2. This succinyl coenzyme A is then converted into another molecule, simply named succinate. Written that one a bit bigger. So, in this step, we get another side product form, being ATP. From the succinate, this is converted into fumarate. And then we get another side product being formed. So there's a bit of a trend in these first four. From step two, from isocitrate, there is a side product being made in every single step. This is how I remember it anyway. But when this fumarate is then converted to L-malate, it skips one, and then it takes... Try that again. It then comes back again to form our final NADH. So... If you've seen my A-level video on the Krebs cycle, well, I call it the A-level, it's just what I learned in A-level, so I call it the A-level one, is you have set products. You have three molecules of NADH, two molecules of CO2, one molecule of ATP, and one molecule of FADH2 being formed. That is exactly the same. That is that is not a fabrication. You get the exact same results. We're just looking at where they come from. So we skip citrate to isocitrate. Step two. First two steps, NADH plus CO2 are formed. So that one, there's a nice little pattern there. And then every step after that, up until FADH2, there's one made. I don't know if this works for anyone else. That's just how I seem to remember it. So step two, NADH. Step three, NADH plus CO2. Step four, ATP. Step five, 
FADH2. Then we skip 6, and then between 7 and 8, we get our last NADH2. So we get 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1, 1. So now we've gone through that, I'll just change the size of my nib. We can now look into the enzymes. So oxaloacetate is combining with acetyl coenzyme A to produce citrate. Luckily for us, that enzyme is extremely easy to remember. It's simply citrate synthase. Brilliant. So we've got citrate. When this citrate is converted to isocitrate, this is an isomeration reaction, as you may assume from the iso. Not much relevance, but you may find it interesting. And this happens by an enzyme called aconitase. The reason I remember that one quite easily is because it's the only enzyme with one word. When the, then when this isocitrate converts to alpha-ketoglutarate, step two to three, we use an enzyme called isocitrate dehydrogenase. Now, a nice little tip, and you'll find out coming up, there are eight steps in this reaction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'll write that in. Now, out of eight of these steps, four of the enzymes are dehydrogenases. So, you know, it makes it a bit easy to remember. The first of which being this isocitrate dehydrogenase. The second complex, it's not just one enzyme, it's a complex this time, is the alpha-ketoglutarate succinyl coenzyme A enzyme being alpha-ketoglutarate. I'm just going to write, actually, I'll write that properly. Dehydrogenase complex. Another dehydrogenase. Now, a good way to remember this is you see this NADH being formed here and this NADH being formed here. We know that for NADH to be formed, NAD has to go in. And NAD is gaining hydrogen, so hydrogen's being removed. So it must be dehydrogenated. Hence why it's a dehydrogenase here and here, because they're both taking a hydrogen out to give to this NADH. So the next enzyme is a bit of a silly name in my opinion, but I'm sure there's a reason. So from the step of succinyl coenzyme A to succinate, there is an enzyme called succinyl coenzyme A synthase. Now, the reason I remember that one is because it doesn't make much sense, because it's not synthesizing succinyl coenzyme A and synthesizing succinate, but because it's awkward, it makes it easier to remember. So, step four to five, succinyl coenzyme A synthase. Then from this succinate to fumarate, there is another dehydrogenase, because FAD is going in and being converted into FADH2, so some hydrogens is coming up, meaning we have succinate dehydrogenase. Then from fumarate to L-malate, this is another one of my favourite enzymes because it's really simple, it's just an enzyme called fumarase, so that one should just stick in your brain anyway. And now if we see here, our NAD is going in and picking up an NADH, so what kind of enzyme is it? Exactly, we have malate dehydrogenase. And there is our Krebs cycle. Quickly run through it again. Acetyl coenzyme A from the link reaction, so we have our pyruvate coming in, convert to that with our PDH complex. I'll cover that in a different video. Con convert the pyruvate into acetyl coenzyme A. Acetyl coenzyme A combines with oxaloacetate. They then use the enzyme citrate synthase to synthesize citrate. The citrate is converted by an isomerization reaction into isocitrate using. Oops, sorry, I got distracted there. Use <laughs> citrate is isomerized to isocitrate, cause um, forming aconitase. And then this isocitrate then forms NADH and CO2 as it's been dehydrogenated to form alpha-ketoglutarate using the enzyme isocitrate dehydrogenase. The alpha-ketoglutarate will then lose another hydrogen and give it to the NADH plus a CO2. 
by the enzyme alpha-ketoglutarate alpha dehydrogenase complex. It's a complex because there's more than one enzyme involved, but it makes up one system to form succinyl coenzyme A. Succinyl coenzyme A is converted to succinate, producing an ATP by the enzyme succinyl coenzyme A synthase. Then the succinate formed then is dehydrogenated by succinate dehydrogenase with those hydrogen ions that have been dehydrogenated from the succinate going to FADH2 and that will produce fumarate. The fumarate is then converted into L-malate by fumarase, nice easy one to remember, and then the L-malate is further dehydrogenated with hydrogen going to another molecule of NADH to form oxaloacetate by the enzyme malate dehydrogenase. So if you know, we've got all of our products, every step has an enzyme, and if it makes it easy to remember, if I haven't quite made it clear enough, there are eight steps. So even if you're having trouble remembering them, I mean, I'd say there's not really much of a trick. Um, I remember just by understanding it. So if you want to learn this, then I'll just say write it down consistently. I started by writing down the products, and then once I could write down the products without fail every time, then I learned the enzymes in between. And every time I went to write the products, I just remembered that there are eight. And then because of this, I always draw it in the same way every time I remembered where each different product went. And say I remembered that and that, but I forgot what succinyl coenzyme A was, I know that neither of them go here. So I would write it all out and then I'd go, oh yeah, succinyl coenzyme A because succinate is formed. I'm not sure if that works for everyone, but that works for me. In one of my lectures, we were told a story that I found extremely confusing using a memory technique where you convert it into a story, a really odd one. So it was like pyruvate sounds like pirate. So it was Captain Jack Sparrow. So we remembered it was Johnny Depp. I, I, I don't know, but it didn't work for me. Um, it might work for you. But anyway, there's Krebs cycle. Make sure to come back and learn about the electron transport chain. And link reaction if you'd like to learn about this PDH complex converting pyruvate into acetyl coenzyme A. So, yeah, you guys stay pretty.